Magandang araw mga bata! Ako si Ma'am Regine, ang teacher mo sa math. Today we will be learning about the circle. This is a lesson for grade 7 mathematics under quarter 3, lesson 7. Kaya tara na and let's do the math. The shaped circle is all around us. There are many things in the real world that represent a circle. We have food such as pizza, cookies, donuts. Aside from that, we also have fruits, slices of fruits, and other things such as paintings, gemstones, life ring, different kinds of balls, and circle-shaped rocks. There are also a lot of things that represent a circle that can be found inside the house, such as clocks, buttons, dining plates, you also have a mirror, and threads. And of course, there are also things that represent a circle outside the home. We have wheels and road signs. If you look at a bigger perspective, the earth and the moon also represent a circle. Aside from these, there are so much more things that can represent a circle. But what is a circle? It is the set of all points on a plane having a fixed distance from a fixed point. We have some given illustrations. What we'll have to do is to identify which among them is a circle. Out of these four, ang ating circle ay itong ating third illustration. Dahil kung mapapansin natin, sa kanilang apat, siya lang yung isang buong circle na close. Ito kulang siya ng isang section. Ito naman ay kulang rin ng isang parte. At ito naman ay open. Kaya naman sa kanilang apat, ito lamang third figure natin iyong nagre-represent ng buong circle. Let's have another activity. This is a crossword puzzle. What we'll have to do is to look for the terms that are related to a circle. These words can be arranged horizontally, vertically, diagonally, or even upside down. First word that we can see is the radius. Upside down, vertically. We also have the diameter. Arranged naman siya diagonally. We also have the term chord. So, ang chord ay arranged na nakabaliktad. Horizontally. Arc. Horizontal lang kanyang arrangement. At central angle. Diagonal naman ito. Kaya naman in this crossword puzzle, we're able to find five terms that are related to a circle. Let's discuss them one by one. These are the terms related to a circle or simply the parts of a circle. Let's start with the center. Center is a fixed point in a circle. Ang sabi natin kanina sa definition natin ng circle, it's a set of all points with a fixed distance from a fixed point. Ang fixed point na yun ay ating tinatawag na center. So if we have here a circle, ito yung ating set of all points, nakapalibot sa kanya. This is the fixed point. Ito yung nasa gitna, sa center. And equidistant siya. Ibig sabihin, lahat ng mga points na ito, pare-pareho yung distance nila dito sa fixed point. So, yung layo dito ay pareho lang ng layo dito at sa iba pang parte. Equidistant. Let's name this fixed point as A. Therefore, point A is the center of the circle. Ang center of the circle, this is often denoted by this illustration. A circle, meron siyang point sa gitna, referring to the center, and then the name of that point. In this case, point A. Another part of the circle is the radius. In singular form, radii if in plural form. It is a line segment from the center to any point on the circle. So in this case, we have another point on the circle. We name it as point B. Connect tayo ng line segment from point A and B. Itong line segment na ito, ito na yung ating radius. Isa lang siya, kaya radius. Line segment AB is a radius in the circle. 
We also have the chord. It's a line segment joining two points on the circle. If you have here another point, this is point C connected to point B. Ito na yung ating chord. Line segment BC is a chord in the circle. Since line segments sila, their names are interchangeable. So itong chord pwede siyang line segment CB. Ito namang radius aside from AB, pwede rin siyang BA. Since line segments are interchangeable yung kanyang endpoints. Speaking of a radius and a chord, we have diameter. It's a line segment that passes through the center and whose endpoints are on the circle. We have another point, point D. Connect natin siya dito sa ating center na A. We have another radius, AD. Therefore, dalawa na yung ating radius, AB or BA, tsaka AD and DA. Since dalawa na yung ating radius, these are the radii in the circle. Plural form na Take note mga bata na ang diameter ay equal to twice the radius. Therefore, itong dalawang radius natin na AB at AD, together they form the diameter BD. In this illustration, line segment BD or DB is a diameter in the circle. Aside from that, a diameter is also a type of a chord. So technically, we have two chords in the circle, yung ating kaninang na-form na chord na BC or CB and BD, which is also a diameter. In a circle, we can form angles. First, we have the inscribed angle. It is an angle whose vertex is on the circle and whose sides contain chords of the circle. In this illustration, this is our inscribed angle. Angle CBD is an inscribed angle. C, B, D. Vertex niya, yung B, it's on the circle. At yung kanyang dalawang sides na BC at BD ay parehong chords. So, ito yung ating inscribed angle. Aside from that, we also have another kind of angle, which is the central angle. It's an angle whose sides are two radii of the circle and whose vertex is the center of the circle. So if we have here another point, point E, and we connect point E and A together, we're able to form another radius. So meron na tayong tatlong radius dito sa circle na ito. We have three radii, line AB, AD, and AE. So ito yung pangatlo natin, radius. Ito na yung ating central angle. We actually have two. Angle BAE and angle DAE are both central angles. So, ito yung ating BAE. At ito naman yung ating DAE. According to the definition ng central angle, ang kanyang vertex ay center of the circle. Therefore, yung ating dalawang central angles na na-form, ang vertex nila ay parehong A. Aside from having the vertex as the center, yung kanyang two sides ay dapat na radii. Kaya naman, para sa angle BAE, yung kanyang two sides ay dalawang radii. Itong radius natin na AB, tsaka yung radius natin na AE. Para naman sa angle DAE, central angle DAE, yung kanyang vertex ay A, yung two sides niya ay radii, AD at tsaka AE. Aside from the angles, we also have the arc. It's a portion of a circle. And speaking of a portion of a circle, it's actually referring to the circumference. It is the distance of the line that makes up the circle. Kung ito yung ating circle, ang ating circumference ay itong linya na pumapalibot sa kanya. Sa ating previous lessons for quarter 2, we're able to mention perimeter and area. For a regular object, regular shaped polygon, ang kanyang distance around that certain polygon, it's called a perimeter. Sa circle, it's called circumference. And a circumference has a formula as well. C is equal to 2 pi r. Where C stands for the circumference, 2 is a constant, and this symbol is known as a pi. Pi is one of the mathematical constants. This is an irrational number. 
Irrational number ang pi, meaning hindi lamang ito yung kanyang exact value. Marami pa siyang kasunod na mga decimals na hindi na natin ilalagay. Ito ay estimated value lamang. Kaya ang ginagamit natin ay itong symbol natin for approximation and not the equal sign. And the pi is approximately equal to 3.1416. R stands for the radius. Using this formula, we're able to find out the measure of the circumference of a circle. Aside from circumference, we also have the area of a circle. It's the space enclosed by the circle. So, kung itong pumapalibot sa circle, ito yung kanyang distance around it, ito yung kanyang circumference, yung area naman ng circle ay yung lahat ng mga nasa loob nito. And for the area of a circle, we also have its formula. A stands for the area. This is the symbol for pi. Yung kanyang approximate value ay 3.1416. R is the radius. And then for R, we have to get its square. Kailangan natin siyang erase to the power of 2. Kaya may exponent dyan. That is a constant. Ito yung ating formula para makuha natin yung measure of the area of a circle. Now, going back to an arc, it's a portion of a circle, meaning it's a portion of the circumference of a circle. We have three types of arc. First, we have the semicircle. A semicircle is an arc that is half a circle. Para dito sa ating illustration of a circle, we have two semicircles. We have this one and another semicircle. We have the semicircles BCD and BED for semicircles. Ito yung kanyang symbol for an arc. This circle has two semicircles. Therefore, if we add them together, we'll be getting 360 degrees or the full rotation of a circle. Isang buong ikot niya. Yung isang semicircle, it measures 180 degrees at yung kabila ay 180 as well. So, dalawang 180, isang buong rotation ng circle equals siya to 360 degrees. Always equal to 360 degrees ang arc. It's a full rotation of a circle. Aside from a semicircle, we also have a minor arc. It's an arc that is shorter than a semicircle. In this illustration, we have a few minor arcs. We have this one, also this one. Ito pa. Ito rin ay minor arc. At ito. Ayun. In this illustration, we're able to form five minor arcs. We have arc BE, arc ED. We also have arc DC. In this illustration of the circle, we're able to form five minor arcs. Ito yung ating arc BE, arc ED, this is arc DC. In this illustration, we have a few minor arcs. We have this one, also this one, ito pa, ito rin ay minor arc, at ito. In this illustration of the circle, we're able to form five minor arcs. Ito yung ating arc BE, arc ED, this is arc DC, arc CB, and arc EDC. So, kung mapapansin natin, itong arc EDC ay made up siya of three letters dahil distinct yung kanyang point dito sa gitna. Kinonsider natin siya as minor arc dahil kapag in-extend natin to, say for example, magaroon tayo dito ng point dito at i-connect natin siya sa center, ito yung diameter niya. Kung ito yung semicircle, ito lamang yung EDC. So, mas maliit siya ng parte na ito, kaya minor arc siya. Dahil lahat ng minor arc ay shorter than a semicircle. And for minor arcs, these are often written in two letters. Pero may mga pagkakataon na three letters din yung ginagamit natin kapag distinct yung kanyang point tulad ng EDC. If you have minor arcs, of course, we have major arc. It's an arc that is longer than a semicircle. In this illustration of the circle, we're also able to form five major arcs. We have arc BDE. This is arc B. E. So, ito yung paikot na yun. Angle BDE or angle BCE. Pareho lang yung nire-represent nila na arc. 
In naming a major arc, we usually use three letters, wherein gagamitin natin yung endpoints niya dun sa dalawa, yung dulo-dulo, at yung gitna ay any point na madadaanan ng arc na yun. Tulad nga nitong BD or BC, since C and D ay nadadaanan naman pareho dito, yung dalawang dulo ay B representing this major arc. Aside from that, we also have EBD or ECD. EBD or pwede rin na ECD. Pareho lang yun. Ito yung arc na kanilang nire-represent. We also have CED and CBD. C E D tsaka CBD. So, pareho lang sila. Ito yung major arc na kanyang nire-represent. We also have BEC Instead of E, pwede rin ang D dahil pareho naman silang nadadaanan. Lastly, we have the major arc E, D, C. Dahil larger siya than a semicircle. Ito yung sobra niyang portion kaya mas malaki talaga siya. And if we notice, the measure of one major arc and the remaining minor arcs is always equal to 360 degrees. For example, if we have the major arc EBC, EBC, at yung ating minor arc ay yung DC at saka ED, if we add its measure together, dapat 360 degrees yan, full rotation. At kung mapapansin natin mga bata, kung ilan yung ating na-form na minor arcs in a circle, dapat ganun din yung katumbas na dami kung ilan yung major arc na ating ma-form. So kung lima yung ating minor arcs, dapat five major arcs din yung meron sa circle na ito. Dahil lagi silang magkatambal. Say for example, ito yung ating arc EBC. Hanggang dito siya. Yung katambal niya ay yung ating arc EDC. EBC yung ating major arc at EDC naman yung ating minor arc. Together, they form a full rotation of a circle, 360 degrees yung katumbas niya. These are the other terms related to a circle. We have segment. It's a section formed between an arc and a chord. Ito yung una nating segment. Ang arc niya ay BC, arc BC. Tapos yung chord niya ay chord BC, light segment BC. Aside from that, ito rin ay segment. Yung kanyang arc ay BCD at yung kanyang chord ay BD, yung diameter. Ito rin kabila. BED naman yung kanyang arc. It's a semicircle at yung kanyang chord ay diameter BD. We also have sector. It's an area enclosed by two radii and an arc. In this case, ito yung ating mga sector. Ito yung kanyang arc, it's BE. Arc BE at yung kanyang two radii na AB at saka AE. Ito yung sector. We have another sector, itong space na ito. Yung kanyang arc ay BE at yung kanyang two radii ay AD at AE. So, yun yung difference ng segments and sectors. We also have second. It's a line that goes through a circle and intersects the circle at two points. So if we have two points, point F and point G, ito yung second. Second is a line, hindi siya line segment, kaya yung nasa dulo niya ay mga arrowheads, meaning it can be extended. Ito naman yung two points of intersection ng second na ito, itong point F at saka itong point G. At ang second ay hindi nagsistay sa loob ng circle, it just passes through. We also have tangent. It's a line that touches the circle at one point. If we have another line here, H, and we have a point outside the circle, which is point I, ito naman yung ating tangent. Tangent is also a line, kaya yung kanyang dalawang dulo ay arrowheads, meaning it can be extended further infinitely. Ito yung point of tangency, point H. Ito yung point where na-touch nitong line na ito, tangent, yung ating circle. And the tangent, it does not pass through the circle. Dito lang siya sa labas. Meron lang siyang isang certain point on the circle na matatouch at one point pero hindi siya pwedeng mag-pass through sa loob. In this illustration, line GF or FG is our second and line HI or IH is the tangent. 
Let's have an activity. We have activity number one. Illustrate a circle having point R as its center with the following parts. A radius RS of 5 cm, diameter SD of 10 cm, chord UV of 6 cm, a central angle we have 2, angle QRS and angle QRT of 90 degrees each, and an inscribed angle, angle WUV of 20 degrees. We'll have to use our tools for geometric constructions, the ruler and the protractor. You can also use a compass. Start tayo dito. Let's have a point. This is our point R, which will serve as our center of the entire circle. So, kate natin. So, from point R, isakto natin siyang itapat sa zero. So, kate natin siya hanggang 5 cm. Dahil yung radius natin na kanyang sukat ay dapat 5 cm. Maglagay tayo ng isa pang point. Mark natin. Tapat yan ng 5 cm. Name it as point S. Connect them together. Connect these two points. Ito na yung ating radius RS na ang sukat ay 5 cm. Next, punta tayo sa diameter SD. Using the ruler once again, kung mapapansin natin, dito natin itinapat sa 5 yung ating point R, yung center, at yung ating point S ay nandito sa 10. Dapat kasi ay 10 cm yung sukat ng ating diameter. Remember that a diameter measures twice the radius. So, dalawang radius, meaning dalawang tag 5 cm na radius. Paglagay tayo ng point dito sa tapat ng 0. And then, let's name it as point T. Connect point T and point R together. Draw a line. So, meron na tayong diameter na ST, which is measuring 10 cm. Next, Pwede na tayong gumawa ng circle. We can use a protractor or a compass to draw a circle. Yung R yung ating gagamitin center. Let's form chord UV of 6 cm. Gamit ulit tayo ng ruler. Tapat natin sa 0 isang point. At yung isa namang point ay tapat natin sa 6. So 0 at 6 kasi dapat 6 cm yung sukat ng ating chord. Name it as point U and point V. Connect them together. We have the line segment UV. At ang sukat niya ay 6 cm. Next, let's form the central angles. Gamit naman tayo ng protractor. So, itong protractor, itapat natin siya dito sa point R sa pinakagitna. At itong lines na to ay dapat na nakatapat doon sa ating diameter. Sa mismong line ng diameter. Kasi may konti pang space eh. So, huwag tayong malilito. Dapat yung zero nakatapat siya dun sa mismong buhit ng diameter. At ito ay yung kanyang pinaka-center dapat katapat ng point R natin. So, kailangan natin ay 90 degrees. So, ito ang 90 degrees natin. Maglagay tayo ng point as a marker. Let's name it as point Q and then connect point R and Q together. May mapuform tayo na isa pang radius. Radius R Q. Therefore, meron na tayo dito ang dalawang central angle at ang sukat nito ay 90 degrees each. So, ang sukat nito ay 90 degrees at ito ay 90 degrees din. Pareho silang right angle. So, ito yung ating angle QRS and angle QRT. These two are central angles measuring 90 degrees each. We also have to form inscribed angle, angle WUV of 20 degrees. So, ito yung ating UV. Kailangan pa natin ng point W at dapat 20 degrees yung kanyang sukat ng angle. Gumamit ulit tayo ng protractor. Itapat natin yung ating protractor. Yung center niya ay nandito dapat sa point U. Sa so pinakatuldok or point no point U. At yung guhit naman ay dapat yung zero. Nakatapat siya dapat dito sa ating linya for the chord. 20 degrees daw ang sukat nito. So, ito yung 20 degrees. Draw a line para hindi tayo malito. Draw a line. And then, lagay tayo ng point dito. Let's name it as point W. We're able to form another chord, which is UW. And then, UW and UV, two chords, together, they're able to form an inscribed angle that measures 20 
degree. So, ito na yung ating inscribed angle WB na ang sukat ay 20 degrees. Ito na yung ating entire illustration for this circle R. Activity 2. From the given circle, circle R, identify two of each of the following arcs. So, we have three types of arcs. We have semicircle, minor arcs, and major arcs. Kailangan lamang natin kumuha ng tagdadalawang arcs out of these illustrations. So, for semicircle po, we have two. We have TQS. Ito yung ating arc TQS. And another arc T. WS. Aside from TWS, pwede rin siyang TUS or TVS. So, ito yung pinapertain niyang arc, semi-circle. Pare-pareho lang yun. Next, for minor arcs, we have a few. Kuha tayo ng dalawa lang. We have minor arc QS and we also have minor arc QT. Aside from that, marami pa tayong ibang minor arcs na pwedeng mag-form dito. Major arcs, we have QWS, Q. W, S. Aside from that, pwede rin siyang pangalanan as Q, T, S. Pwede rin Q, U, S. Q, V, S. So, lahat ng mga yun ay tumutukoy lamang dito sa major arc na ito. Isa pang major arc ay Q, U, T. Q, U, T. Aside from Q, U, T, pwede rin ang pangalanan niya ay Q, S, T. Q, W, T. Pwede rin Q, V, T. At yun nga, QUT. So, ito na yung ating mga arcs. Last activity, activity 3. Using this same illustration, what is the circumference and area of the circle R? For circumference, ito yung ating formula. C is equal to 2 pi R. And for area, ito naman yung ating formula. A is equal to pi R squared. Ang sabi rito sa ating given, ang ating radius RS is equal to 5 cm. Dahil lang kailangan lang naman natin dito ay measure noong ating radius, 5 cm. Starting with the circumference, papalitan natin to ng symbol for approximately dahil yung ating value ng pi ay approximate lamang, hindi exact value. 2 is a constant multiplied to the approximate value of the pi, which is 3.1416, multiplied to 5 cm. Ito yung given value ng radius natin. Multiply these three together, we'll get 31.416 cm. So the circumference of this circle is 31.416 cm. For area, following its formula, substituting 3.1416, yung approximate value ng pi, Multiply to 5 cm, yung value ng ating radius. I-raise natin siya to the power of 2 kasi kailangan natin siyang square. Following the GEMDAS rule, we need to perform the operation for exponents first before multiplying. Kaya naman, 3.1416 is multiplied to 25 which is equal to 5 squared. 3.1416 multiplied to 25 is equal to 78.54. At yung kanyang unit ay magiging centimeter squared na. Dahil dito, ito ay equivalent to 5 centimeter multiplied to 5 centimeter. So, 2 5 centimeters yung multiply natin together. Kaya squared. And that's it for our video for today, mga bata. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Ang Teacher Musamat, for more grade 7 mathematics content. Turn on the notification bell para updated kayo kapag may bago na tayong lesson na i-upload. You can also comment. Feel free to comment and share your opinions and ideas. You can also ask some questions. At syempre, don't forget to like and share this video para mas marami pa akong mga tulad mo grade 7 na bata ang maabot at maturuan. Dahil ako si Ma'am Regine, ang teacher mo sa math.